Hey everyone, we're here still in uh, in Taiwan at this point with the GTX 1660, and during our trip, the embargo for this card will have list lifted. So uh, we'll hopefully have a full review. But in addition to that, we've got a teardown of the first model we've seen, which is the EVGA GTX 1660 XC, and this card should be pretty straightforward. So I guess we'll just start with the disassembly. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte AORUS AD27QD Gaming Monitor. The AD27QD is a 27-inch 1440p gaming display with 95% of DCI-P3 color saturation for high color accuracy, accompanied by a 1 millisecond response time, 10-bit IPS panel, and display HDR Visa certification. Additional features include fluid adjustment and slide, RGB LEDs for personal flair, and firmware features like cooldown counters, reticles, and adaptive noise reduction. Learn more at the link below. Typically on these, you can just pull the heatsink off separately without even going through the smaller screws on the back of the card, but we'll see if those need to come out for this one. It just depends on if they're, these are often just connected to the base plate, and then the cooler itself might separate, but let's just try it first to see if this can go easily. I think we might need to disconnect the rest of those. So let's go take out the smaller screws on the outside. So this card, at the time of filming this video, I actually have no idea how well it performs, but by the time the video goes up, we should have a review live in theory, which will have full benchmarks versus the TI and whatever relevant AMD cards are in the price point. So this card will be $250, and the reference card will be $220. And then, uh, as far as the PCB, this should be a reference PCB with some slight changes, like the PCB length or size. And then we need to get into the rest to see details. So this screw is just held in with a nut on each side. So we need a 5 mil hex for the DVI. All right. There's our I.O. plate, and now this should all separate, I think. All right, so there's the cooler. This is actually really similar to the 1660 Ti in some ways. It's the same uh, cold plate where it's got this sort of juts out at the edges. Same cold plate as the 1660 Ti we took apart. Uh, it's still three heat pipes that look like they are 10 millimeter heat pipes right through the center where the GPU goes. And let's uh, let's clean up the GPU a bit and see what the labeling looks like. TU 116-300-A1. So just like with the 10 or the uh, 2060 and downward, Nvidia has gotten rid of that second demarcation after the 300. And some of the cards you'll see like a 300A. Dash A1. The the A1 at the end here is just a revision number, but uh, 300A would have been used for some of the higher-end cards, and they've gotten rid of that, where there's a, a split between the GPU spec for the high-end GPUs that have been a bit higher. Manufacturers can pay more. So that's been gotten rid of for the lower-end cards. And what we're looking at is just the base plate, and we can peel that off at this point. It's held on just by thermal pads and by, it looks like maybe, nope, just thermal pads holding that in. So let's move the cooler and expose the rest of the PCB. So there's the base plate. This unit's got Micron memory on it, although that may may vary. Uh, and I think we have some VRM specs as well, but let me get the rest of these thermal pads off just so we can show it. So there's your memory VRM up there at the top. And then for the VRM specs, so it's a, a six phase. They're using 50 amp uh, power stages. So you, there's NVVDD uses a UPI, UP9512R and NCP. Uh, 302155, which if, I don't know if we'll have Build Zoid look at these, but if we do, he'll talk about those in more depth. And then for, uh, I guess we can talk about shunt resistors because we always do just to show if you wanted to short them for some reason. It looks like there's just the one up here. Then there should be one for PCIe connector as well. This is a very nice one. If you wanted to short it, although it's probably not really worth it on these low-end cards, uh, yes. So that that shunt resistor is going to go to the PCIe cable. Thank you. And then for the rest, we'll talk about uh, other VRM specs. If, if we do any Buildzoid videos, we can cover it there. But let us know in the comments if you want one. These low-end cards, sometimes we cover them. Sometimes it's not really worth it because you start getting into territory where a lot of people just genuinely don't care about the VRM quality. 
uh, if they're just looking for more budget-focused cards. But let us know if you're interested. And otherwise, check the review for full details. Again, at time of filming, I have no idea what my opinion is on the 1660 as a, a GPU, but we'll talk about it in the review. So thanks for watching, as always. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you all next time.